we drink tequila, we talk. Welcome to Team Tequila Talks. Talk, talk. I need a booster seat. A booster seat. I need, a, I need to go get the booster seat out of my car. There it is. You look so much taller than me. I, I am so much taller than you. I think these you. chairs, my Girl, they are the same size. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to Team Tequila Talks. Your hosts, Cassandra G. Namel and Sharon Gonzalez, having a height discussion over here. And yes. we're going to cheers. Looks like a, it looks like a lemon drop. That wasn't the idea, but Was you know it? what? Cheers. Cheers. To our lemon drop esque tequila. I like the California toddy. Um, yeah, so let's tell the people how we came up with this. It's fall. And the, the funny thing is, is Sharon actually doesn't like fall and fall things that much. And she hit me up and was like, hey, let's do a fall cocktail. What's fall? And I was like, you don't have to fucking ask me twice. I fucking love fall. You fucking love. I think it's your I, favorite season, actually. I, of course it is. I have been putting pumpkin spice in my coffee since September 22nd. I actually took a little break when we had that heat wave because it was... It, the, the whole pumpkin spice, that heated spice thing, when it is it will make you hot. Degrees. It'll make you yeah, hot was, with the nutmeg and like yeah. Yeah, I, I started on the twenty second, and then I took a bit of a break, and now I am I'm, I'm fully back in it. We've got like this gloomy sweater weather yeah. teasing thing happening right now. High of seventy five, love it. Point is, it's still not cold enough for a hot toddy. No. So I look up this cocktail and it's like a maple syrupy type cocktail. And we go, oh, this looks great. This looks like touch of fall. And we didn't realize that it was a hot toddy because we're not in the mindset of hot toddies no. yet here. No. I think this that's like hot toddies aren't till winter here for and, me. And I think if I'm really sick, like if I'm sick in the summer, I had the summer flu this summer, I made a hot toddy, but I made it with a uh, whiskey. Yeah. But if I'm sick, I will have it no matter the weather because I'll be under the covers. It doesn't matter. You're drinking while you're under the covers in bed? <laughs> yeah, you know you know when you get the chills when you have the flu and you get the chills and you're like, ooh, something warm, but I always put whiskey and or bourbon. I mean, we should explore that old wives' tale because I've heard that like when you have a cold, the, the whiskey has beneficial they, properties. So they used to, back in the day before, you know, there was – you know, much medicine when babies would teeth, they would dip mm-hmm, their finger mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. bourbon or whiskey and oh, just yeah. rub it on the gum. Now yeah. you DCFS will be called and on you. Frowned upon. So don't do that to your children. <laughs> do not take our medical advice. <laughs> Definitely you know, don't. I love saying that here. I don't literally don't take that one because they're little poor livers, but you know, but they used to do that. So I do think there is some medical something, something or other. They would give you bourbon when sometimes you would, um, get sick in the hospital before they, mm-hmm. before there was anesthesia, mm-hmm. they would give you some whiskey or yep. bourbon to help and, and you. And a wooden spoon to bite down on. Yep. Yep. Well, we decided to alter our hot, not so hot. Well, maybe we just call it the not so hot toddy. Not so um, hot toddy. I like so that. So we decided to make it kind of, it's still, it's still autumn. It's still spice. We've got some fresh lemons. I grabbed the last ones off the tree where oh. I were done with the lemons, I think for the year. Um, but oranges are coming soon, which is exciting. I love like, orange. The, those really pop in the, in the winter. Yeah. For me, I mean, like I'm a fall person from September 22nd until So winter doesn't actually start until December 21st or 22nd officially. But I think that once you hit December, you just got to lean full into Christmas and Christmas and fall doesn't really match up. No. And how do you know what, when date starts of seasons? And there's a calendar. There's a calendar. I've never, I think in in school, I probably took a test when the season started because in California, when you're born and raised, there are no seasons. Right. But it's just summer and then Christmas. So the rest of the country and North America and most parts of the world, they're definitive seasons if you are up in for example you know we always spent all that time in canada mm-hmm. it is like it is pull out your coat yes season. it's true it is all of the leaves have changed half of them are already on the ground you start to see that in september you're getting glimpses but fall starts september 22nd and winter is either december 21st or 22nd but it's it's always later than you think yeah, because like spring it's not like- doesn't start until the end of March, and we think that it's earlier because it gets nice. It gets here warm. Earlier. And I grew up in Texas, so same thing. You know, we didn't really have definitive seasons in right. the way. That but you guys get a little snow. No, not, not in Houston, not in South Texas. Oh, not in. Oh, okay. that is at North Texas, yes. Okay, but in South Texas, by the water, Bay Bayou, no, right. Uh, so it's like warmer. Yeah, and I mean, it does get cold mm-hmm. in the winter. But like not really until December definitively, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you could still get a a, a nice warm, I don't want to say snap because it's a cold snap, like a warm front. 
I oh, guess. Yeah. So you get a little warm weather. And so sometimes like, I mean, listen, sometimes the lake is even nice in October and November because it hasn't cooled down yet. So it's like, it's not super, super. It's not super cold and you yeah. can still hop in. It, you're still getting some sunny 79 degree days, all that stuff. Mm. But back to the cocktail, we've got some fresh squeezed lemon. You know, we love the fresh squeezed here. What else, what else do we have in here? We have some Frangelica, Frangelico? Hazelnut liqueur. Now, usually this is a little sweet for us, but we just did a little dash to have that nuttiness that fall. That's yeah. what we're looking I for. I used half of everything. Obviously, I'll post the recipe, but I, did, I didn't I did do mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. 0.5 of the Frangelico, 0.5 of the maple syrup. But I think, I don't, I'm not a fan of Frangelico, but I think the the, lim, the lime, the lemon. The lemon. It's like cutting into whatever. It, it has a nice back note, like a back end. Well, I also think that we used it more like, like a, a bitter's. Right. Yeah. As opposed to a dumping in an ounce right. and a half of liqueur. So yeah. it was more for the undertone of it. So we're mm-hmm. cutting back on the sugar that way. Speaking of sugar, we have used organic 100% maple syrup, never anything in the Aunt Jemima family. No. High fructose corn syrup. Here. No. Log cabin. Yeah. Log cabin. I, I grew up on some log cabin. So um, the other thing. You know, we haven't touched on some of our health benefits in a while because we've covered so many. I know. But the maple syrup. Maple syrup is a good one because it is a more, first of all, it's a natural sugar. Just you go and it comes out of a tree, right? Is that, is that what, is that what you do? I'm pretty sure there's some drilling. Yeah, there's probably some drilling. But then you, you tap, you tap the tree, you tap the tree. Tap the sap. And, um, I feel like, don't come at me Canadians. I'm sure that there's a, there's a more difficult process, but, uh, but it is, it, it comes from a tree. It's super natural. You don't have to break it down, bleach it, process it the same way that you would sugar. And it is a more complex sugar. So it's going to have a lower GI index, which we love. That means that is, it is going to spike your blood sugar way less. And it is going to not cause that spike in glucose where you are all of a sudden crashing and hungry and want to eat more. It's, I want to say it's in the mid fifties, which is, Mm. is pretty decent. Like white bread is in the nineties. Yeah. You want to, I think anything 50 or below. Oh, it's 54. I looked this up earlier. I forgot. I looked it up. It's 54. Um, I think, uh, looks about 54. Um, jury's out. I think it depends on like what, (laughs) well, I mean, I guess how much you use also, is that for like Correct. A, a ounce or two ounce or well, tablespoon. and it says they have determined that eating maple syrup causes a lower rise in blood glucose sugar than white sugar, corn syrup, brown rice syrup, and it has a lower glycemic index similar to honey, molasses, and agave. Which well, they, we use agave a bunch we, here. We do, and that's actually kind of nice. I mean, I just I just googled because I was like, wait, there's different colors of maple syrup. And I, yeah, I don't really get that. That one, that's going to be an like amber. the type of tree. Yeah. You have an amber. Well, they said it, it's four grades, gold and amber, dark or very dark. And they're made of two components, color and flavor. And the flavor corresponds with the color. So the darker the syrup, the stronger the maple flavor, which oh. actually makes sense. Okay, but is this part of how they filter it and and bottle it? Or is this the the species of tree? It, it's Sam, because golden, I don't know. It, I'll look it up. It, but to me, if I was going to make a very educated guess, it would be the species of tree. But aren't they all maple trees? But I guess the subspecies Correct. in the maple Think about group. agave. Oh, it's true. Right. Very so true. think about how many different types of agave plants mm-hmm. there are and how many different types of palm trees when you're talking about like, you know, dates and all this stuff. So there there are different types of maple trees for sure. It's not just the one. Okay. So wait, today's golden syrup would have been graded as fancy in Vermont, grade A light, light amber in New Hampshire or Canada number one light amber in Quebec. Interesting. They said the Did you golden. Know you have to answer those questions to pass your Canadian citizenship exam. Really? No. Oh, I was gonna say because I know the hundred dollar bill smells like maple. Or is it the hundred dollar bill? That's not true. It is. That's a myth. No, it's not. I smelled it. No. Yeah, I, right hand to whatever. <laughs> I smelled it. No, that's like when they tell you that you got to listen to a giant sea shell to hear the ocean, and really, like, it's just because you want to hear the ocean. It's not a real thing. It it's, is it's like a psychological trick. No, it's not. You can hear it. Their money. Doesn't actually, I'm about to Google it. They do not let's like, bet, run it through a maple let's, syrup. Let's bet machine. a glass. Of, let's let's bet a bottle of tequila. 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 <laughs> That's the American cousin of tequila. Tequila. I love it. So, but I just googled that the Bank of Canada said they never did that, and that it's all neurological. I told you. I told you. <laughs> I smelt it, and maybe it's like sometimes when when someone directs your psychological brain, say you're going to smell this color. Or That's you're what gonna, I just told you. Sharon. I know, but. 
I'm telling you. That's not I, a thing. I it's, think it's psychological. It's it's psychological. I I don't know. You want us. I think someone is sneakily putting maple scented flavor into the printing press. <laughs> like there's like there's Jerry who still like ha- had a, had a couple on his lunch break. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you know what we're going to do? We're going to make this money smell like maple, maple syrup. Why different maple syrup is different colors? Because there's amber and there's dark amber and there's extra light amber. No, the um, Canadians like the, the the one the version in in Canada is the light amber. My husband from Toronto and we worked in Vancouver for seven years. And the funny thing is, is every time we go, you know, you go on vacation, you meet somebody in the pool or in a restaurant, you're making small talk and they go, where are you from? And we say, well, we live in L.A. And they're like, cool, cool. So California, great. And Stephen will say, but I was born and raised in Ontario and Toronto. And they're like, oh, man, I know a Canadian. Do you know John? (laughs) And they like, they always, they never say it when, so California is, is bigger than Canada population wise, not size wise, obviously. But the the funny thing is, is anytime we say, yeah, we live in California or we, you know, we have a place in California, whatever, because we actually do bounce around quite a bit. I don't think that we live anywhere. Right. But anytime we say like, we flew here from LA, that's the airport that we departed for on this particular trip. I actually, look, I think maple syrup is delicious. I mean, I like the lollipops, the lollipops. We're talking about fall. We're talking about maple syrup. We put maple syrup in our cocktail. It's not sober October over here. Never. So this is Libra season. It's also both of our birthdays in this season. We just celebrated both of our birthdays. So we're leaning into all things fall. And this is a hot topic. This is a discussion because some people are like, I don't care about the seasons. I don't care about fall. Can everything I stop, like I don't, I want to stop smelling pumpkin spice. I am over all things fall. And other people on the other side of the spectrum are like, hit me with all things fall. I want the pumpkins. I want the pumpkin spice. I want the Ugg boots. I want the sweaters. I don't care what the temperature is outside. I want a lovely organic non-fake fra- fragrancy candles. Okay. I want the good stuff. I want the really good stuff. I want the squash. I want all the fall foods. You better believe I'm making chili. So, I mean, that's, I feel like this is a very polarizing thing. It is. Well, okay. So this is why I might be a little biased against fall. A, we don't celebrate fall here in California. Not real thing. Although the leaves do change. There's a big misconception that leaves don't change in fall. They actually do. do. Just not as much. Palm tree leaves don't change. Right. Because when I was in high school, I used to have to rake my front yard of the leaves. It was like manual labor. But I also don't think, I think everyone looks cuter more handsome, more prettier with a hint of a flush of sun. And when you don't get the sun, everyone looks a little bit, you don't have that blush flush and you look a little bit sad. But I like a golden glow, like a glow like J-Lo. I like like a golden glow. And I think the sun, everyone just seems more perky when it's sunny. I don't know. Everyone's personality seems a little bit more bubblier. Okay, but this is also my issue with with Christmas. And I love fall. So for me, personally, fall starts... When the calendar says it starts, I'm talking September 22nd, and it definitively goes until Thanksgiving. Don't even talk to me about Christmas until after Thanksgiving because I fucking love Christmas so much. And here's why I'm so opinionated on this. Because if you start Christmas on November 1st, as soon as like your Halloween costume's literally still at the foot of your bed, right? And then you don't take down your tree until February. Now all of a sudden Christmas is a quarter of the year and you're watering it down. It is now Christmas from concentrate, right? <laughs> like it is not as special when you stretch it out, especially that early into fall. It, when you are starting halfway through autumn and starting Christmas, first of all, you're skipping over all of the magic that is fall, okay? And it's a beautiful time of the year. And then you're just diving into Christmas and it's so watered down. I mean, right now it's going to be 70 and people are going to start break out their trenches in L.A. People yeah. like to cosplay winter in L.A. It's very cute. Fall, fall, fall. <laughs> Stop skipping over fall. <laughs> Because we've been doing, I've been doing it forever. Oh my goodness. If you go to a Dodger game, like on a Sunday and it's like 68, everyone is like, they're in like, I don't know, Green Bay. It's like they're at a Green Bay game. (laughs) They have their little arm hand muffs. (laughs) Listen, I'm not mad at it. I like the fall enthusiasm. Plus sometimes just like your psychological trick of smelling maple syrup on money, that's not actually there. People in LA want the psychological trick, trick, the trick of like, this is fall. Yeah. 
No, I, no lie. My girlfriend just texted me. It is soup. It is soup weather at like 8 a.m. this morning. Danielle, she was wedding. like, it is soup weather. And I was like, ooh, ooh, Italian wedding soup tonight. Like, <laughs> it's very 70. specific. Because yeah. you spend all summer trying to stay like cool. Yeah. And then it, and by the time you hit winter, you're like, nope, warm it right back up. Let's go. Let's go right back up. And fall is the happy medium. It's very This true. is why I like it so much. This is why I like it so much. So we've established I love fall. You're kind of meh on fall. Meh. But you have to have a favorite fall ritual or a fall um, ceremonial. Not ceremonial. That sounds so formal. Yeah. You have to have a fall thing that even you do. I am. I get a farm fresh box every week okay. with, like with in season fruits and vegetables because I do believe you should eat the fruits and vegetables that are in the season. 100%. It's just better for you, healthier Agreed. for you. And I will say we... When it comes to the fall vegetables that I can incorporate into a meal, like last night I made like black rice with Romanesco and um, squash, roasted squash. Okay. And I dig it. That sounds it very fall. It's very, very fall. Very harvesty. Very harvesty. Very harvesty. So I do, and I also do, I work out throughout the year, but I love a fall workout because it's just not as hot. Oh, me too. I know. So it's like you get the breeze and then you're working out and you're, you still sweat, but it's just not as like Death Valley hot. I like to sweat because I'm working hard, not because the thermometer is not working as it should for a normal well, person's workout. I like a steamy, I like I a hot know. room. I know, I know, I know. We not do Pilates me. together and sometimes like, we fight over the thermostat. We, we I like it. a 90 degree, like hot nope. Pilates, hot yoga. You lost me. I like to sweat. I think there's toxins that you're releasing, like a steam room, a sauna. But you're going to sweat anyway if you are working out properly. But it's like double the fun. No, because like the, it, it's you're firing up the your, your detoxification system in general, right? And you have your sweat coming out. If you are excessively sweating during your workout because of artificial stimulation like heat, you're just losing water weight. You're dehydrating yourself and your workout is not as efficient. But the Swedish study that said after if you had come from a heavy night of drinking and you get into the sauna, it does detoxify. Well, but, but that's because you're just sitting in the sauna. You're not working out in but the if you, sauna. But then, then you, if you raise your heart rate and do some... You arm do, pumps. But you're going to do that anyway if you're working out. That's I my know, point. But then you get double the dose, which means double nope, the that's detox. That's not a thing. It's not double a thing. the detox. No, that is incorrect. <laughs> incorrect, ma'am. Incorrect. It's like the detox to, to retox type of thing. It is, but you only need the, the one. You only need the one stimulation for sweating. That's my point. Fine. Yeah. I disagree. But, but I mean, I like it is a beautiful time of year to go on hikes and I love a just, hike. like enjoy working out outside. I do yoga outside all the time. Love it. Couldn't love, love it. it more. It's really nice when you're just not being hit over the head with unbearable heat. I know. It's I, I, that's my kind of my ritual is the fall vegetables and working out in the cool. What's yours? Oh, I have so many. Well, we know you love a pumpkin <laughs> spice. Go to Cassandra's Instagram and watch her make the pump. You, you should redo that real because now it's yeah. like this time like of year mm -hmm. it holds up because i think a lot of people it's a very healthy yeah, sure unprocessed is. pumpkin spice latte so i definitely dive into especially on thanksgiving both canadian and american mm -hmm. i feel like this is weird that we should consider this a dual episode it is. <laughs> just like a dual citizen um but i like taking traditional heavy fall Thanksgiving treats and decadent foods and making them cleaner. For example, I love like when I was a kid, we'd have the candied yams. And I just remember you'd get those giant oversized cans of syrupy, bright orange yeah. yams. And then you put the marshmallows, the, jet puff marshmallows yeah. on them. Like so, so, so much junk. So what I do instead is I take real sweet potatoes, real yams. I steam them, cook them, take the skins off. And then I whip them with a can of full fat coconut milk yes. or coconut cream so with yummy. some fresh sea salt. And the coconut has just enough sugar to give it that sweetness, but it also has the decadence with the fats, but it's all healthy. Right? It is like all it's healthy. a clean fat. So, so, so it's still going to be a little rich because the coconut cream. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it has the decadence of it. So I like to get in and, and if you've seen my Instagram, you see that I like, I love taking those holiday lattes because you should be able to enjoy a pumpkin yeah. spice latte or a, um, you know, like a brown sugar, which I use brown coconut sugar, mm. kind of that like creme brulee. And the peppermint, latte. peppermint latte. Yeah. Easy That's to getting do. more into Christmas. But yeah, uh, but yeah, just isn't in general. peppermint fall? No, it's winter. It's mint. It's winter. Disagree. Yeah. Well, anyway, I like just creating in general, like I do a gluten-free, dairy-free Chex Mix. 
Which is um, actually, I've had it so in good. Canada and at your house. It's very, it's very so yummy. Um, I actually think it's better than the original. And now it if I have, really like, is. If I, I mean, I don't really eat, I don't eat packaged Chex Mix, but like sometimes my mom makes it. Sorry, mom, but it's not as good as mine. Um, Yours is actually really good. It's it has really a, good. It's savory sweet. And, and you don't get too much of the sweet, though. Yeah, I know. It's not candy sweet. So um, the other things that, I mean, football is obviously a big fall it is. thing. I mean, I know that football also goes into winter, but there's something about the starting of football and, and college football and just kind of I love it. the social aspect of having people. Well, I love to weekend. Yeah, I love like football. Yeah. Not parties. Not parties. They're like kickbacks. Watch Be- sessions. Because you wake up in the morning, you put on your fluffy socks, and you're in your PJs. You don't have to brush your teeth right away because football comes on at 10 a.m. here in the West Coast. No I cannot brush no my concern. teeth and have my Baileys and coffee at this. I cannot do it. Why can't you brush your because teeth it tastes- with no toothpaste? Well, that way you get the sweaters off. You give it a good. Like, it's going to be a no tooth to, to brush your teeth. You need toothpaste. <laughs> okay, so we had an episode about beauty swaps, right? Yes. And one of the things that I have really been keeping an eye on are toothpaste swaps because yeah. they're saying that fluoride is the new lead. Again, right. not a doctor, not a medical professional, right. but I've looked at all of these studies and they're saying like we're going to look back because fluoride is linked to thyroid dysfunction because we put too much of it in menopause. the water. Well, yeah. and it's also in your toothpaste, in right? Your toothpaste, yeah. So it's and. No, it's a massive endocrine disruptor. So I've gotten into this brand. There's a couple. Um, just ingredients makes a paste. A paste, and I it's the a charcoal. Powder. It's a tea yeah. powder. It's Is a it powder. charcoal? It's, sorry, not a paste. It's oh. a powder. It's not a paste. All right. Uh, and then we also there's Risewell, which is a great one too. Yeah. And the whole thing is like, why do you? So back in the day, it was all tooth powder, and now we switch to paste because like it's prettier and it's more convenient. Yeah. And it, and it foams, and it's like I'm brushing my teeth. Well, my teeth are super clean. Because our because our dish soap foams, our exactly. body soap foams, but it's not supposed to. It, you just need like a cleaning element. So it's not as pretty, but it is non-toxic. It whitens your teeth. It prevents cavities with Xylitol and Xylitol that stops bacteria from growing on your mm. teeth. So I'm very into like the super crunchy, Maybe you need to go back into my, I, I use my hippie toothpaste back when I was making my own deodorant and I got cavities. So I switched back because we just can't be having cavities. And, yeah. I, and he was like, what are you using? I'm like, oh, this. And he's like, No. Use your fluoride toothpaste. Use yeah. your anti cavity. Well, that's what my but maybe it's said, gotten better. Maybe the, it's my gotten better. said, and like I'm gonna have to go back for my checkup pretty soon because I'm doing. I'm gonna be like, sir, I'm not down with the fluoride because yeah. it's there's all these new studies coming it out is. about the toxicity of it. And I mean, like, go do your own research. But clearly, we do a lot of research here on yeah. Team Tequila Talks, and I just I think that. There's is something to be said about all of this information about fluoride resurfacing when we have other things that can stop cavities, like Xylitol, and there's 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 other types of toothpaste, tooth powders, tooth cleansers yeah. that you can get the cleaning effect without having all of this toxic. For me, if I even think it's toxic, but there's another alternative, there's right. another substitute, then like, what are we even doing? What are we even right. talking about? It's true. Well, we're talking about big business at that point, but I will say. I don't brush my teeth because of the mint taste and it disrupts my coffee and Bailey's for football. That's what I'm saying though, is with these tooth powders, they don't use any type of artificial flavors or chemicals in them. Okay. So, gotta link me. so that's, that's the thing is they say like, Oh, don't drink orange juice after you brush your teeth. Well, you know, first of all, the, we only yeah. drink orange juice if it is fresh squeezed and like, Hello. You know, in a cocktail, and you, you don't want to put like straight sugar in your body first thing in the morning. No. But if it's the mint and the chemicals in your good old fashioned crest that is killing your ability to taste things. Mm-hmm. If you use a natural toothpaste that doesn't have fluoride, doesn't have chemicals, doesn't have fillers, doesn't have thickeners, doesn't have things that make it foam, yep. then you will be just fine to drink your coffee. I'll be, I'll be fine to enjoy my Baileys and coffee. Yeah. Give it morning. a try. Well, that's kind of like, that's I mean, your challenge for this. Week, okay. Right? You got to link me on, on the, on the toothies, but cause I think, you know, having smelly breath is a part of football season until at least 11. Okay. And so after you're done with your coffee, then you brush teeth, then you're like, okay, now I'm hungry. I can eat. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's my ritual. I, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> mad at your ritual at all. I do it at your house. No one, no one ever says anything. I to also, me. I mean, I, another fall thing that I really love is we just had Canadian Thanksgiving, um, last week and, we have American Thanksgiving coming up. And I know that in this day and age, Thanksgiving is controversial. And I'm not arguing the points or the reasons that it is controversial. But to me, I think that anything in life is what you make of it, right? Yeah. So you can choose to 
harp on the bad stuff where you can say, you know what? I know where this came from. It wasn't right. And now we know better. Right. Right. I mean, you're talking about the hundreds of years ago, there were a yeah. lot of limited resources and, and there were, there wasn't a ton of education and, right. and like people fucked up a bunch back yep. in the day. And now and, we, and like, they're now still we know fucking up. Yeah. Now we know better. <laughs> but what you can focus on is what you choose to make of the holiday. Maybe that's time with your family. It's just family right? time to me. I look at I Thanksgiving. I agree. I agree. It's, Maybe it's a time to be thankful and grateful. Right. Maybe grateful for the education that we've evolved past where Thanksgiving came from. Yeah. Right? Like maybe we're grateful. We just take a day where we're super appreciative of what's around us. And yeah. that's our family. Family, and friends. And our home and our friends yeah. and our downtime, vacation mm-hmm. time. Football. Hello, football. <laughs> and football treats. You know, I love some bacon and spinach pancakes on football Sundays. Totally. Yep. I mean, then I love to sag into like some sausage and some burgers. Some what? Sausages. Sausages. <laughs> it's not an episode if you don't make a word. <laughs> I love a link. I love a link. Organic. I love a link. Grass fit link. Okay. But I mean, I, I do love the fall. If it's about doing, it's not the fall in and of itself. My house is not decorated in fall. Even, although That's my daughter okay. told me, but I was like, because I was like buying Halloween decorations and I have some that I use, but I like to switch it up some years, like something sure. fun and new on her sure. door or something. And she was like, do you know my teacher decorated her classroom in fall? And I was like, I don't care because <gasps> I don't celebrate fall. And she's Meanwhile, like, I'm here like, I, yeah, girl. I told her, I said, go to, go, to Cassan- go to Cassandra's house if you we want your fall. We actually don't have a ton of decorations yet though because like we don't live in one place. It's like, true. As, as you know, we're yeah. always on the move. We're always bouncing around. We we live, in, we work, live and work in multiple different places. Yeah. Um, man, my frequent flyer status is up there love it but um we I, a lot of times it's hard to put certain decorations because you know it's like oh we're only here for four days this month and it yeah. doesn't it doesn't make sense it but, doesn't make sense but the spirit of fall is always with me i know i know you'll be on the, on the, the flight whatever day you leave and you'll be asking for some pumpkin why don't you bring you know what if you were really about that life you should shoot an instagram reel with your little pumpkin thing that you bring on the airplane. What, thing? what pumpkin thing? Pumpkin latte thing you make oh, if you're leaving out in the morning and yeah, you should bring your buzzer and say how to, how to fallify your flight. Fallify your flight. <laughs> Hashtag fallify your flight. <laughs> Can we talk about the return of football? You know what? Look, football has like, okay, let's just touch on football real quick. I know I, it's I text, been back for more than a month. I know, but I just texted my away. girlfriend. We live in a world where the Cowboys have a great record and the Rams don't have a great record and Brady is... Not, I mean, if you read the press and the tabloids and you believe that him and Giselle may or may not be divorcing, but he is thinner. He doesn't look well. When he took that family leave at the beginning of training camp, I'm like, he came back and I said, did he get work done? And then it's like, no, he just dropped 40 pounds and the stress will do it to you. Well, yeah, it will. Like like, they call it, what is it called? The relationship diet? Like, I mean, I think that the thing about, so the tablets right now are saying that Tom and Giselle are separated. Because and because he came she did an interview and she said it's because he unretired. He retired and then unretired, which makes him a liar. Oh what? Okay. And to hold her, on. To her. Hold on. To her. I don't think that makes you a liar. I think that you're a human that's allowed to change your mind. Imagine living your entire life. Okay. We're talking about 40 years. At least, because let's, and we're not going to count the first couple of years, but you're, since you were a small child, you were working toward this dream of being a football star. And this is all all you want. You know, you're dedicating your life, your practices, your family, as they're driving you to practices, they're spending money, they're doing all this stuff. You can get to the point where you retire and then go, "Mm, no, you know what? I actually thought I was ready to retire. And I'm not, I mean, look at, look at the Rams last year. Didn't Andrew Whitworth retire? And they were just like, Hey, come on back, dude. And he went, okay. Yeah. I mean, and And also Gronk and Gronkowski did the same. And and Gronkowski did the same when Tom was like, Hey, he's like, I'm retired. He's like, no, you're not come play for the Buccaneers. And they won another one. But I think the only reason why I say that is because he did a podcast. I forget the, the sports guys podcast, but I was listening to it and he was just like, you know, I haven't been there for my family. And, you know, I think I made promises that I couldn't keep as a husband and as a dad. Mm -hmm. And I miss baseball. I miss soccer. I miss every major sporting event. Am I ready to retire? No. Will I do it for my family? Yes. And I think when you're living in your purpose, there's a very dangerous line. Look, you married Tom Brady. You didn't marry the postman. We love a good postman, but you didn't marry a postman. Do you think Giselle's marrying a postman? No. I say like, like, like. Firefighter, firefighter. Firefighter, sexy. yes. But I don't think <laughs> to marry a, someone like Tom Brady is to kind of accept that 
he will play this game until the wheels fall off. And it is well, until not he can't until he can't. That's what I'm saying. Until he, you know, gets so tired and banged up that he needs to ice for three days after every game, which is almost impossible. So it's like, I don't believe, and this is my own personal belief that when someone has a purpose that then you can say enough's enough or now, or, or cause what the reason why you're dating him is because he's Tom Brady and he is one of the goats. Well, that's the thing is, I mean, he's an attractive man, but if he were, you know, a server at Chili's, do we really think that, you know, he's got a shot with Giselle Bunchen? No, which is why I think, and this is just my own opinion. When you date a professional athlete, you know, and they're that good, I just don't think you can touch their career buttons. I just don't believe you could have input. Hey, honey, take the day off or I'm gonna take the kids. You know, I think because their their careers are their bodies what? and your, their mental state is usually well, there's no separation. If you are, you know, an insurance salesman, you can check out at the end of the day. You can leave your job at the office. But when you are so dependent on your body to fulfill your career and and what your whole life is shaped around. There's no stepping out of it. There's no checking out of your body. Well, it's like the mental, like Kobe Bryant, when he retired, he saw a sports psychologist. He knew it was going to be his last year. So for a whole year before he announced he was retiring, he retired his mind from basketball. And he talked a lot about it will haunt you if you don't tell yourself over and over again, you cannot, your knees, your back, your, he's like, yeah. because he didn't want to have resentment or feel like, man, what if, what if I could still play? Cause he's, it would haunt you, haunt you. And I think if Brady needs to have the worst career, the worst season of his career to retire, then let him do it. Yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate that he didn't want to go out on a, on a high note. I mean, even when I take tennis lessons and <laughs> that last the, hit, <laughs> the instructor's like, let's do, let's do two more. And then I nail the second to last one. And then on the last one, They're I'm like, wait, 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 we got to do wait. one more, one more, one but more. But that's human nature, right? You don't yeah. want to go out on a, on a, on a bad note. You want to go out on a high note. And I think, yeah. but I do think, you know, the game for him is, you know, he's not a running back. He's not a, you know, wide receiver. He's not a defensive back. He's not getting banged up as much as those guys. And his accuracy is still good. So I don't know. I feel like I get it, personal stuff. And maybe there were promises made that he couldn't keep. But I just don't agree that when someone's in their purpose, that anyone else should interfere. Spouse, parents, siblings. I think if you are doing what you're supposed to be doing, then everyone needs to get on board or fall off the train. That's just me. Thank you for joining us with a little, for a little chat about fall football. Fall football. I think we spent a whole episode talking about fall and football. I think we did. And, and rituals. Syrup. <laughs> and maple syrup. <laughs> well, cheers. 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 Thanks for joining us. Click, like, subscribe, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.